light tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful watercolor washes. Oh my gosh. Using a plastic baggie, some markers, it could be just about anything you want, and some heavy duty watercolor paper uh, like one of these. This is from Walmart. It's Grimbacher 140 pound, and this is 8x8, and then this is 9x12, Grimbacher 140 pound also from Walmart. So that's what we're going to be doing. And um, this is <laughs> this is so cool. So let me get a piece of paper out. We're going to do a wash. This is the hardest part of the whole project is getting the watercolor paper out of the book. Okay, we're going to do a wash. I'm going to show you step by step how to do a wash. And then we're going to finish these. Okay, it should be really fun. Alrighty. So, first thing you're going to do is you need a baggie that's going to be big enough for your size of paper. And you're going to want to kind of draw on one side of it using a Sharpie marker where you want your edging to be. And it is going to seep into that part, but it, does, it kind of frames the, the look of it. I used a Sharpie and I labeled it back. I don't know if you can see that here. Okay, so then you're going to flip it over. And I'm going to just put a piece of computer paper under this so I can kind of see where I am. But I don't want my watercolor paper to be under there yet. And you want to use colors that are going to look good together. So I did um, this one was purple turquoise and green, which is what we're going to do here. And this one, which I really love, was orange, uh, pink, and red. Okay, so um, I think it looks good to have it kind of go in a diagonal pattern, but that's totally up to you. I'm going to do green. Here. I'm going to do turquoise and I'll show you what we're going to do. Let me just get it mapped out. And then I'm going to do purple. All right, let's start coloring with the purple right now. Can you kind of see what I've done? Here. I've just sort of drawn it on here. And um, I've done this all different kinds of ways. This is like my fourth or fifth video doing this. <laughs> it's really fun. Oh my goodness, and you guys, this is a super fun project to do with the little people in your lives. So if you have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces and nephews, if you're in a VBS, a vacation Bible school, you teach Sunday school, you're a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout leader, uh, you know, you have some reason or occasion to do something crafty with a, a young person. This is super fun and super easy. Okay, so I'm going to start and I'm just going to color in the purple area first. And it can be messy. Um, I have done, like I said, I have done this project many different ways. And I have tried just coloring this and then spritzing it and laying it down on my paper. And the thing is, you, when you do it that way, you can see the streaky, hard lines. So, this time, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And I just created a reel a few minutes ago to show this technique and you know reels are one minute long <laughs> which is impossible for me because I want to give all the instructions so if you just watch that reel this video here will address all the stuff that I couldn't possibly cover in one minute and it, the deeper your color that you want your color to be the more you're going to color on your plastic baggie and you can use these baggies over and over and over in case you're, you know, thinking, well, that's not good for the environment. Uh, 
yeah, I'm going to keep using the same baggie. I'm just going to wipe it off. You can use a baby wipe, an antibiotic wipe, or antibacterial wipe, or um, a paper towel and water. Super easy. Okay, my green is, in this marker is not super dark, unfortunately. Oops, and I really went out of the lines there. Um, and my Crayola markers, which I love, they are kind of dried out. I've had them for a long time. So you can use washable markers if you want. Um, do protect your work surface, surface and your clothing. And be prepared for your fingers to look like this. I've already washed my hands about 10 times today. Okay, so I have that colored in pretty fully. Let me lift it up and show you. Can you guys see that? And then what you're going to want to do, I'm using my Magnolia Spritzer from MagnoliaDIY.com. And I'm just going to spritz a little bit of water on my plastic baggie. And then I'm going to use a brush to mix it up so that we don't have these harsh lines. Or hard streaks, or I don't know how, how to describe that, but this does seem to help. And um, don't worry if there's one area that has uh, less color in it because we're going to be smooshing it all around. So make sure you get the lines that you drew at the edges. And honestly, the colors that you choose are totally up to you. You can be finished with this project at the end of this part, or you can keep going. Of course, we're gonna keep going because I'm gonna show you how you can create a beautiful piece of art that is frame worthy, if you ask me, using some beautiful Bible verse stencils and chalk paste from MagnoliaDIY.com. Okay, so I think I have all of my uh, marker lines kind of smooshed around good. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your watercolor paper and you're going to lay it down. And then in one quick motion, you're going to flip it over. I see lots of people on. Hello, Helga. Hi, Deborah. Hey, Norma. Hope you guys are liking this project. It is super fun. Um, it's I just, this is totally my thing. I love doing these kinds of sort of unusual types of art. Okay, so I've got it laying on top of my piece of paper. And it's not straight, but that does not matter at all. And now what you're going to do is you're going to just start smushing. You may spritz some more, but let's smush for a minute. We're just rubbing this color into the paper. Yep, we definitely want to spritz a little more water on it. And it, it can be any kind of water for this project. Although I mostly keep distilled water in my spritzer because I want to be able to spritz my chalk paste and stuff when they start to get a little dry. And um, you really need distilled water for that kind of thing. don't want to get your paper so saturated, um, but you want to get it wet enough that you can kind of get a little blending going. 
and you can kind of push the water that's sitting on your paper out to the edges. And I do like to leave some negative space, which negative space is where, it's like in this one, I did a better job with this one, where there's spots where it didn't cover everything. I think that adds more interest. You can just keep lifting and peeking and spritzing and smushing until you feel like you have everything covered as much as you're going to want. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off. We're gonna scooch this over here for a minute. And I am just gonna take a paper towel and wipe the marker off my baggie. And then I can use it 25 more times or more. So we don't have to, uh, be hurting the environment or wasting anything. Okay, so this is what I have right now. Um, I am gonna grab my hair dryer because it, I love my heat gun, but it doesn't dry as quick. So I'm gonna use my hair dryer for just a minute here. Just make sure everything doesn't go flying off my desk. And I'm gonna quickly bring this dry and then we'll move on to the next step. So tell me what you guys think. Do you like this? Tasha Allen says it's so cool. I think it's so cool. enough and you can see some kind of streaky lines but that's okay um, this kind of a project I do want to warn you though it is yeah you could frame it without glass or with glass it would totally be up to you Carol um, it is <laughs> it's addicting I mean I don't want to make lunch or wash dishes or do any of my stuff that I need to do around the house because I just want to play with watercolor paper markers and little Ziploc baggies all day long. Okay, so that is what I have. And, um, oh my gosh, Magnolia has so many beautiful faith and Bible verse stencils that you could use. This was the one that I did on this one. And it's Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And maybe you notice that it's in two colors. The first color I did was white and you really couldn't see it well enough. So I just put my, I cleaned my stencil, put it back on and shifted it over just a little bit so it looks like it's a shadow. And I used black. So that's, this is a, this is an amazing stencil. This is another beautiful one. We might use this one. This is that um, Esther 414. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. And then look at those flowers. Or, I love this one. I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. Or we might do this one. This one is the let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 150 verse 6. Or I could do this righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10 which says... Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
Uh, and then there's 25 more. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to do this one, this psalm. I think it's going to be lovely. But it would be pretty with that Esther 414 too. Okay, this is paper. And paper can sometimes be a little tricky. Um, oh my goodness, and thank you so much for the stars. I really appreciate that. Um, so paper can be a little tricky because these stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com, they are sticky. And they can have a tendency to pull up a little bit of the top layer of your paper if they aren't used a lot before you do it or fuzzed. So I'm using my tacky towel. Um, that, this is the side to fuzz and this is the side to pat your stencils dry. And I'm just taking the stick factor down just a little bit by rubbing it on this towel. I could do it on my jeans, I could do it on this apron, I could do it on my t-shirt. Um, anything that, not a terry cloth robe or anything like that. But, um, okay. I think that's probably sufficient. And we're going to use black because I figured out in doing the first project that I don't think you can see it well enough when it is white. Although I love the idea of that. Okay, and I'm just pressing it on really good. And then we're going to, so we're going to use black chalk paste. And... This is a small cut apart squeegee. What do you guys think? I mean, these, these I think, I'm looking at this, is that crooked? It's close enough. These are so pretty that you could get some, you know, basic frames and you could make these and give them to people as gifts, as your own artwork. Um, I just, I'm super impressed with myself. <laughs> uh, I can't believe how good they turned out. Oh, and I did want to show you this one. Okay, so not only can you do this total abstract color wash, you can also create things like flags. I did this last summer before 4th of July, and I used a white stencil on the blue part. And it was just as simple as kind of drawing the American flag on a Ziploc baggie and then pressing it into this uh, watercolor paper. So there are tons of things that you can do with this idea, but you do need watercolor paper. It's not gonna work on computer paper or construction paper. It definitely needs to be watercolor paper. get it on and then I'll come back and I'll pull out the big clumps and globs and then I'll be done. People tell me all the time that I make this look so easy and you know what here's the thing it really is pretty easy but it's like anything else it takes a little practice to get the hang of it um, to feel, know how much to go over and over, how much not to. Um, and even still, I've been doing this for a long time, I have goofs all the time. And hopefully this won't be one of them. Oh my gosh. It is fabulous. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to throw this in my tub that does not have water in it. Darn, I forgot. <sighs> Let me spritz it just a little bit until I can get out into the sink. Okay. So if you don't like these super bright colors, then you could use some colors that are a little bit more muted. What do you guys think? Isn't that pretty? Wow, Carol says. I agree. I, I Every time I'm shocked at how fabulous they turn out. Okay, I did these. 
um, just a little while ago. They're dry. Would it work on a canvas? Um, a stretch canvas, I'm presuming that's what that question is about. I'm not 100% certain if it would, but I tell you what, buy a stretch canvas at Dollar Tree and then try it. And if you ruin it, big deal. It was $1.25. Um, but it's worth a try for sure. And if you do and it looks good, I would love to see. Okay, so there's several things. Well, there's a million things I could put on um, these square 8 by 8s But I think I'm going to use some of these Proverbs 31 stencils. I'm going to use that one. Her children rise up and call her blessed. And then I think for this one, um, there's these love or maybe these are called Christian love quads, I can't remember. But they're all verses about love. Love never fails, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. Love always hopes, always perseveres. Love is patient, love is kind. Love always protects, always trusts. Let's do love never fails. And there's a hundred more beautiful stencils that you could use. Okay, we do need to fuzz again. These uh, stencils that are like four to a sheet, they're called quads. They are so versatile. I use that size all the time. All, all, all the time. But here's one. She is clothed with strength and dignity. I didn't do the design on it because I was, this was a Dollar Tree project and we used some of the Dollar Tree wallpaper uh, to do the background, but Okay, that is sufficient. And then I need to decide where <laughs> to put it. And I could measure but I'm probably not going to. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to press it down really good. We're going to use the same black ink, but you could do something different if you want. Uh, however, don't ever use paint on your stencils. It doesn't matter what kind of paint it is, chalk paint, acrylic paint, uh, latex paint, milk paint, uh, craft paint. And the reason why is these stencils are something that you can use for years and years and years to come if you take care of them and paint uh, of any kind dries fast and it dries permanent and it will permanently clog the mesh in your stencils the little holes and that's how you get the design so I know it would be great to just run out to Walmart and grab some paint to use oh my gosh that is so pretty but don't do it don't even be tempted to do it Okay, let me just see where I can put this since I forgot to get my water ready. I'll clean off my fingers before I touch this. Isn't that pretty? If I don't say so myself. So this was um, a hot pink, orange, and red marker. Um, let's put it right there. Okay, and let's do this one. Love never fails. This one, I didn't color my plastic baggie quite as intensely. So, it's, um, it's much lighter. I do think I used the same color, so I do need to fuzz this. The other thing with fuzzing your stencils, um, what brand of markers did I use? Th these you can use cheapo, cheapo, cheapo. This is Jumbo Markers Classic, Classic Colors Hello Lobby. I think I got them 
either at Target or Walmart, I can't remember. They're children's markers, and this is Crayola. And these are great too, but mine are just old and kind of dry. They don't have very much um, color left in them. If you use washable, washable markers, then your hands won't be, um, you know, covered. That you'll be able to wash that a little bit easier. So if you watched my reel that I just created this morning on the, this idea, um, something in here feels like a piece of sand. If you watched my reel. You're probably saying, oh my gosh, I couldn't even understand what she was talking about. That's because you have one minute to do a reel. And obviously, one minute is nowhere near long enough to explain this. So I just gave a high-level view of it. But anyways, um, yeah, if you're coming to this page after watching a reel, here is the full-length instructional video. Okay, so I just put some blobs of black on here. Push it through the holes. And like I said, um, these are pretty just by themselves. It's way too much. They are beautiful just by themselves. So if you don't stencil, that's just fine. But if you don't stencil, let me ask you this question. Why not? <laughs> If you're not artistic, I couldn't draw a, a pony to save my life. I can do kind of abstract stuff, but if you're not artistic or you can't do beautiful lettering, um, stencils are the way to go, seriously. And I know people say, wow, those are kind of expensive, but the thing is they're an investment in your crafting stash. Look at that. And they last. You know, I have some that I've way overused. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 even times. And um, they look terrible, but they still work just fine. So here's this one. And you can see I didn't get my ass pushed down very good, but it's beautiful. So here are these two. And then there's really nothing else you need to do to them. However, if you want, when they're fully, fully dry, you could do a very light coat of clear matte sealer spray. Um, but I don't know that you necessarily need to do that. Do that. Uh, so those are the two smaller ones that we just did. This was my American flag from last summer. Here was the one that we just did. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, Psalm 150, verse 6. And then here's the one that I did before I came live when I was experimenting and practicing this morning. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, Psalm 119, verse 105. So let me know in the comments if you would like the entire list. I have a full list of all the stencils from Magnolia DIY that are faith or Bible verse. If you want to look at that list just to see what there is, if there's any verses in there that really grab you or any Christian themes that really grab you, just say full list and I'll get that for you. And then you can just click, click, click and go right to the page and take a peek. Um, if you want the supply list for the, these projects, let me know that too. Okie dokie. We'll do it this or this. This is a new angle that I'm trying right now, and it's hard <laughs> to figure out where I am. Um, so do a thumb up or a heart or say something to me in the comments. Check to see if you've liked and followed this page. Um, feel free to sprinkle. That's awesome. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah. Bar Barbie, I'll get you a full list as soon as I'm finished here. Okie dokie. Helga, I'll get you the full list too. Alrighty, well, thank you for joining me. I hope that this was entertaining. Again, if you have little people in your lives, um, this is a perfect project 
because it's just going to involve markers, and you can get washable markers, Ziploc baggies, and a little bit of watercolor paper. Um, and see what they come up with. It's great for their little brains, even their, you know, 10-year-old brains, to experiment and play around with this kind of stuff. Uh, Okie dokie. Well, you guys have a blessed rest of your day. I'll either see you later today or tomorrow with more projects that are going to be quick and easy. You don't have to be an artist or a professional crafter. They're going to be um, sometimes a little different, like using a plastic baggie to create a watercolor wash. They're going to be affordable, and they're almost always going to involve either faith, family, or flowers. Alrighty. See you guys later.